Hello, and welcome to Political Forum Wednesday. I am your host, Dartesia Pitts, and this evening we have a distinguished guest. We have State Senator Mad Maddie Hunter of the 3rd District. Good evening, Senator. Good evening, Ms. Pitts. How are you? I'm good. Wonderful. Thank you. As you know, I again, like I said, I am Dartesia Pitts. I'm a board member here at Can TV, okay. and the board we bring this weekly community service show where we're able to discuss and talk about relevant topics with our elected officials here in Illinois. You can also join in the discussion by giving us a call at 312-738-1060. I encourage you to take this time and join in the discussion here with Senator Hunter today. Senator, we had an opportunity to, to chat a little bit prior sure. to walking in here. Sure. And you were telling me a little bit about yourself. Can you, and you said you're a Chicago. Born and raised in Chicago, Cook County Hospital. All right. <laughs> so can you tell the audience a little bit about who you are and where you grew up? Sure. And the classic Chicago question of where'd you go to school? They always <laughs> ask that. <laughs> okay, good. So um, from the time that I was born to eight years old, I lived in um, Old Town, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I attended as an elementary school in uh, at uh, Manier and Schiller Elementary Schools. And because of gentrification in that area, we wind up moving to the south side into Robert Taylor Homes. And so from the time I was eight years old until I became a college gradu graduate, we resided in Robert Taylor Homes. So I attended Beethoven Elementary, DuSable Upper Grade Center, DuSable High School, and then on to college. Okay, and I had an opportunity to tell the center, the senator <laughs> that m my family, a lot of them are from Stateway, okay. and that's legendary Black Bell Chicago. Absolutely, for sure. Okay. And, um, when you tell people that you're the 3rd District State Senator, exactly where is the 3rd District? Well, the 3rd District uh, goes on the north, northern end of my district. It goes as far north as um, um, Chicago Avenue. And then it starts veering uh, south, uh, the far, as, as far west as uh, Chicago Avenue and Franklin. And then it starts veering south. So I wind up with near north, near south. Uh, I have Michigan Avenue from Chicago Avenue all the way to um, 60 something hundred south. I have parts of uh, near north, near south, um, um, Grand Boulevard. Um, I live in Washington Park, so Washington Park, um, Inglewood. Um, now, now the newer parts of my district is um, South Shore as well as Market Park. So as you can see, I have a, a very diverse district. Okay. And who are some of the corresponding state representatives that work Good. with you? Yes. Uh, representative Ken Duncan as well as uh, our new uh, state representative, Sonia Harper, who replaced the late Esther Golar. Okay. Yeah. And if you're just tuning in, I'm Dartesia Pitts, and I'm sitting here interviewing yeah. State Senator Maddie Hunter. Please give us a call here at Can TV at 312-738-1060. There's a lot going on right now with our state government. A lot going on in Springfield. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the big headlines I know that the you know that everybody's talking about, the public is talking about is our state budget. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give the viewers today um some information about what's going on with our state budget? Well, um We've had so many challenges with the state budget. Uh, as you know, last year we passed the state budget and the governor did not like it, so he vetoed everything in the state budget except for education. And uh, he uh, kept education in the budget last year because uh, the schools must start on time and in order for them to start on time, we must have monies in the budget, okay? Mm -hmm. And so this year we were trying to get ahead of the game by passing the budget and there were a few items in that budget that the governor wanted but it was not enough and so um, but anyway we were not able to agree on a whole lot regarding that budget until we came back into special session and we were able to pass a six month what we call a stopgap budget and that would at least stop the bleeding it would allow um, 
uh, us to fund education. It will allow us to pay some of the vendors, whether they are non-for-profit social services, small businesses, large businesses that rely on, on government dollars, um, Medicaid. Um, we we, we uh, funded, um, put dollars in the budget for uh, violence prevention as well as after school programs and a number of initiatives that are essential to the operation of state government. Wow. So for six months, the stopgap budget is in place? From June of this year until December 31. Okay. okay. And so we're back in session for one week in, Jan in November as well as one week in December. And I would hope that we can come on, come to some kind of agreement so that we can pass the other half of that six month uh, budget that will uh, commence on January uh, 1 so that we can continue with the flow of, of state government. Okay. Yes. Do you think, um, or are we as taxpayers, are the Illinois residents paying more money this way or is it, it's just we're, we're operating it's on the same scale, amount of dollars. It's the same amount. The same amount of dollars. It may cost a little bit much, a little bit more because okay. of the way we put it together. Right. But, um, but yeah. It's um, okay. We have a caller. Hi caller. Hey, good evening. Um, I have a question concerning the um, uh, the violence in the city of Chicago, specifically gun violence. And I read, um, Senator, that you uh, might have, might be sponsoring a bill concerning people who are repeat offenders. Um, can you uh, talk about that? Well, I'm always uh, supporting legislation or sponsoring legislation as it relates to criminal justice. And what I try to do, my background is social services, so I try to integrate the two of them together. In, in consideration um, with the family and uh, so um, actually I'm not the sponsor of that piece of legislation uh, Senator Kwame Raul is and I can't talk too much about it right now because it hasn't really come together yet but um, uh, there was a press conference with myself and other legislators and community leaders with the police superintendent um, Johnson a couple of months ago to talk about re repeat offenders and, and giving them more time for um, the crimes that they've committed. Uh, the notion is if you lock up repeat offenders who are causing havoc in, in this uh, city, then the, the police is expecting the, the crime rate um, to reduce itself, like cut in half, you know. And so that's the direction that that piece of legislation is, is going in. I know that it is not fully complete right now. It hasn't come together yet, but it is coming together. And now different groups are hearing about it, and they'd like to add um, their information on to that bill. So we don't know what, is, what it is going to look like um, in the final uh, end of it. Okay. Thank you, caller. Thank you. So back to um, the discussion of the state budget. So example if I um, am a constituent in your district and I need I'm in social services and I need additional funding or need funding period for my non-for-profit organization and I come to your office what can I do to keep my doors open what, yeah. what are my options well your options are to find private philanthropic dollars go to the federal government uh, see if the city has any uh, dollars within uh, their uh, um, children and family services department. The state has no new dollars for anything. We, can, we, we are barely paying our vendors who we are under contract with today. There are no new state dollars. And it's, it saddens me because I've been chair of the Human Services Committee for so many years. And um, there are there are no new dollars at all, and so I'm always trying to refer someone for uh, new re new resources that I am aware of, and um, I try to stay on top of it as much as I can because I get that question almost like six or seven times a day. We yeah. have a caller. Is the caller still available? Hi, caller. Yes, thank you for taking my call. And I wanted to make the point that uh, when, it, when it comes to addressing the issue of crime, uh, I'm hoping that uh, the legislation that the senator is referring to specifically targets violent gun offenders. Uh, I, I think I speak for a great many people when I say that um, I have no interest in sending away for longer periods of time people who commit crimes of vagrancy or retail theft or driving while suspended. 
there are a lot of repeat offenders who are not violent offenders and they're committing fairly low-level kinds of crime. Right. I want to make sure that uh, when we talk about passing harsher sentences, it's specifically targeted towards violent offenders and even more so towards violent offenders who use guns, and especially illegal guns. Yes, thank you very much uh, for that information, uh, caller. I believe that that is what the legislation is focusing on, are the violent gun repeat offenders. Yes, I do believe so, sir. So thank you very much. And if it isn't, I'll make sure that I pass that information on to the police superintendent as well as the sponsor of the legislation. Okay. Thank you, caller. Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, so going again, just back to the budget. Yes. So your consist the constituents or the constituents pretty much statewide because this is affecting everybody this it is. this isn't just um about the third district right. um what kind of issues um are they facing as it relates to um the social services are they just um vanishing or um well what's what's happening there are no new startups for social services unless they have they've identified their own revenue stream that's okay. one thing uh, the second is, um, it's been in the paper, it's been everywhere, that so many not-for-profits, whether they've been in, in business 100 years, 75 years, they're basically going out of business, or if they're not going out of business, they've had to drastically reduce staff, drastically um, scale down on, on everything, and not provide the level of services that they have uh, been accustomed to providing in, in the past. And so... Um, as a result, everyone is suffering as a result of us not having a budget and and, and as well as uh, suffering because we cannot seem to get our act together down in Springfield, you know. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, I am sitting interviewing Illinois State Senator Maddie Hunter. I'm your host, Artesia Pitts, and please call, engage us, and join the dialogue here at CAN TV at 312-738-1060. So let's move on to a, um, okay. a more fun topic. Okay. <laughs> Education. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, of course, with the, the funding issues, it's difficult for education not to be affected. And a lot has gone on, I know, in Chicago specifically right. as it relates to education and funding and the, the gaps in the budget. Mm -hmm. um, how does the, if you can explain to the viewers how the state is involved in the Chicago public school, um, I guess, the, 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 the entire funding formula yeah. of how that works. Well, the formula, um, gosh, we did not, well, the formula was developed, gosh, 30, 40, 50 years ago or so. And because of the formula, the way it was set up, it's based upon uh, real estate taxes. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, and it and it has a number of other different different um, uh, uh, pieces to it, mm -hmm. and as a result of that, you have a huge disparity in funding that exists throughout the state of Illinois as it relates to education. Okay, so um, you have issues dealing with pension. Um, Chicago public school teachers are paying into the state pension as well as the, the Chicago pension. Okay. And then you have state teachers, teachers who work for the state that are in central and southern Illinois, they are paying into their own pension fund. Okay. And so it appears as though Chicago teachers are paying twice into the state fund as well as the, um, um, the city pension fund. And, and that's a huge disparity as well. So we're trying to get a handle on it. We've had we've 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 had so many bills to level the playing field as it relates to ed education funding, mm -hmm. and we just can't seem to pass it because the richer schools in Winneka and Kenilworth they want to keep everything the way it is, and they are not willing to give up anything for Chicago or any other parts of of the state. Okay. You know. And so you have challenging schools, not only in Chicago, we have challenging schools in Central and especially in Southern Illinois okay. that are not faring very well either. Okay. So there are a number of issues that are, that, are, um, that are going on that has a major impact on education funding in the state of Illinois. I know that Senator Andy Menard um, came pretty close to getting something passed, but we're all, we always fall short of two to three votes. Okay. You know, 
it's not that we're, we're not working towards it. Uh, we are every single day. We're holding hearings around the state, but, you know, we just simply need to, to get uh, more legislators outside of the city to join us. If they can find, if they can, if they can determine that their school district can benefit from the new formula or the new presentation that's in the budget, then they'll vote for it. Okay, okay? that's the whole thing is what do I get out of it? What can I bring back to my school district? You know. We have a caller. Call, are you yes. there? Hi, Senator. Um, I know you were talking about the budget earlier in the program, and I wanted I had kind of a two-part question. Um, well, one of my questions is, when does the stop gap budget expire? And in terms of that, are, are there any timelines that I need to pay attention to? Are there any? What was the last the last piece of your question? Timelines that we need to pay attention to in terms of the the budget expiration date. Yeah. So uh, the budget, the stop, the, the six month stop gap budget that we passed. Um, started July, um, July 1 actually of this year and it ends December 31 and so that is why when we return in Springfield uh, for the two-week veto session we will be in session one week in, in uh, November and one week in December I am very hopeful that we can come to some kind of agreement so that we can pass the other half of the six-month stopgap budget that will take us from January to um, uh, uh, June 31. Yeah, but 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 we must figure out and agree upon revenues to fund that budget. That's the sticking point that we're on right now. The, how do you fund the, the 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 last six months of the budget? Right. You know. Yeah. It's difficult. Some folks are talking about increasing taxes. Oh God, we don't want to hear anything about taxes any any more increasing the taxes. Some people are still talking about trimming down. They're looking at new revenue. Some folks were talking about, before we left Springfield, a casino, a casino or several casinos. And some people were talking about, um, uh, I think it's, um, gosh, um, a, a tax that, uh, for, for businesses and the wealthy. And, you know, just all kinds of things are being thrown. I know that I have, uh, I, I, was, I have a, um, a bill that... Um, levels a one percent uh a one cent tax on sugary drinks okay. that can possibly generate that can generate uh tens hundreds of millions of dollars actually but um uh, we have been having a lot of pushback from the beverage industry so but that's on the table as well i think that's yeah that's that's, on, a that's good definitely option. on the table as well so well while we're talking about taxes i know that one of um What's new to Illinois is this medical marijuana industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does the state um, expect to um, make a substantial amount of money taxing these new dispensaries um, to possibly help fund some of the gaps in the budget? Yeah, so the dispensaries that are up and running now, um, they are generating some dollars, um, but... I think this is only a like a three or four year pilot program. Uh, they 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 started up a bit late, so I don't know if we are going to extend the deadline to give them the full amount that we intended for it to happen um, for uh, three or four years. But I know that if you look at other states, it's bailing them out of their debt. That's what I was big thinking. Big time, mm -hmm. big time. And you know what's really interesting? I met with some condo owners um, last year on the, the, the northern end of my district and these people were like in their 60s and late 60s and 70s you know mm -hmm. and they said well what's the problem we all get high and <laughs> <laughs> they blew me away I said what really <laughs> you know so I mean you'd be surprised who uh, participate partakes um, in marijuana you know but uh, the medical marijuana I do support it especially for children with epilepsy okay for sure yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely, it's just my own personal opinion. I definitely mm -hmm. think the recreational use, um, that taxing that is going on in states like Colorado, the right. fact that they've been able to do so well, right, right, right. and we're in such a crisis, we need to think outside yeah. the box. Well, you know, I was one of the persons who, I voted 
against that first mar medical marijuana bill. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because I have a master's degree in, in, uh, in alcohol and drugs. Okay. And so when I was taught back in the 80s, uh, uh, the, the, the harm that drugs and alcohol have on the body and the family and the community and everything, I, you know, that, that stuck in my head. And so the more people I talked to, the mm -hmm. more research I conducted, mm -hmm. I found out that, um, that there are some, some very positive medicinal uh, benefits of marijuana. And uh, there were a group of parents, several groups of parents that came down to lobby us and to talk to us about epilepsy and, and how marijuana has um, helped their children reduce the number of seizures, if okay. not eliminate them altogether. And it's just really an amazing thing to, to watch, you know, although it was not inhaling any kind of marijuana, it was just simply rubbing some oil, marijuana oil, right. on their bodies. And, and it just worked so fast and was able to help these kids, you know. So um, okay. I've been, I've educated myself and, and I've, I'm turning around my attitude now. Okay. Yeah. Um, do we still have, we are a caller. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, caller. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. Um, what I wanted to know, Senator, was under what circumstances could you see the, the, the Democrats reaching across the aisle and, and working w w with Governor Rauner on some of his proposed initiatives in order to get a long-term budget for the state passed? Um, sort of what items would you need to see um, put on the table, and what items would you like to see come off, kind of, you know, what would that look like, um, if you could envision or describe that for us, please? Well, actually, um, there has been a tremendous amount of reaching across the aisle on our end over to the governor, over on the, the, the uh, Republican side. It's just that um, it is my understanding that um, during the budget negotiations, um, the, gov the governor will have his people in the room, which I am not one of the budget negotiators, but everybody, the, the, the Republicans on the House and Senate side, the Democrats on the House and Senate side, as well as the governor's office, um, get together and they are the ones that negotiate the budget. And our negotiation negotiators tell me that as soon as we, we're pretty close to reaching an agreement, the governor decides to pull everything off the table and you start all over again, oh, wow. you know. And so if, if you're having that, that kind of um, uh, uh, negotiations or the lack of negotiations, we'll never get anywhere, which we haven't gotten very far, uh, you know. And so I just think that if everybody can just leave their, um, their egos and their attitudes and whatever kind of game plan they have outside of that room, and come in good faith to negotiate the budget. I, I really believe we can get, we can go, we can go to very high strides. We can advance and we can make all kinds of strides and, and and put together this budget and move on with uh, serving the people of the state of Illinois. But anytime people come in with their different agendas, mm -hmm. that is what kills us every single time. We're always laughing and talking. You know, we have dinner together with the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, many of us sit on um, a number of committees um, to, um, I know like the women legislators, we have our own organization where um, we're passing legislation for women issues, focusing on women and children issues, mm -hmm. and we get along perfectly. It's just that when folks get into that Capitol building, they change. Something happens where they change, and we can't accomplish the goals that we've set out to accomplish. You know, so yeah, I believe that if we could just leave our our um, our our private agendas, leave them at home or leave them somewhere, but do not bring them in that building so that we can get some work done, some meaningful work done. That's that is what is so frustrating um, uh, to me. You have so many people that have the will. You have so many people who work so hard to try to get uh, accomplish some of our goals, only to have one or two people that just throw an iron in the fire, and next thing you know, all the negotiations stop, and you need to start all over again. So, Especially when you see your constituents that are uh, devastated yeah, by yeah, the decisions. Yeah, I've never seen so much devastation in my 14 years, and um, I know I'm always trying to figure out how can we make a difference? What is it that I can do 
uh, to get folks at the table and talk. I've had many conversations and I'm still talking to the governor actually. I think as a person I really like I really like the governor and, and he likes me as well. It's just that he has his policies, uh, all of our all of our legislative leaders have their own policies and you know at some point we are going to have to have a, a happy medium. Mm -hmm. You know. We have another caller. Hi caller. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi. I just wanted to ask the Senator, I mean, uh, this, the budget impasse is very frustrating, obviously, for you, but for the layperson, you know, normal business would never be able to get away with that. Now, isn't there any way, you said you're not on the committee, but isn't there other way for the other legislators like yourself to, to maybe change the committee members or pressure them into finally making some decisions? Well... The people that, um, okay, so I have, I can make recommendations to, in which I do make recommendations to, we call them the budgeteers. And so we make, rec all the legislators have an opportunity all the time to make uh, recommendations. It's just that um, the people that sit around the table, and they, they, they switch people on and off, don't get me wrong, we, because we, we do that, you know. Um, and I don't believe it's the people that are sitting around the table. The people that are sitting around the table, they are our budget experts. They know the budget. They know where everything is. They know how to get the budget done. You know, so these are the right people at the table. I think that it's the leadership is where the problems lie. It's the leadership. Okay? And uh, so that's what I'm talking about. It's not the people sitting around the table. You know, because when we send our people in, we have a list of saying that these are the the items and the issues that we'd like covered in the budget and everyone else does but I, I believe that when it looks like we're getting pretty close to what is what we really need in order to get the job done you have some of our uh, leaders that are saying well I don't like it let's, let's let's throw that out the window and let's start all over again or take this out and take that out well if you take this and that out then there's no sense in putting a budget together because you've diluted, diluted the entire budget that the people really need so, so that is what I mean by saying that um, we need to work a little harder um, and, and become a little bit more focused on the process and become a little bit more serious about what we're here for. And we're not here for Maddie Hunter or, 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 or Bruce Rauner or John Cullerton or Mike Madigan or Christine Rodonio. We're here for the people of the state of Illinois. They're the ones that voted us into office and, and sent us down to Springfield to look out for their best interests, you know. So that's what I'm about, and, and that's what I would like to focus on. Well, we're almost out of time, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions okay. for a quick answer so okay. we can get the information to the people. Okay. Do you have office hours? No, I do not have office hours. If anyone would like to see me, they can see me at my district office at, they can, by calling 312-949-1908. Sometimes I see people uh, from, from uh, Monday through Fridays. Uh, I do not have office hours because sometimes we're calling into special session at the last minute or we are, we're, we're holding hearings all over the state. And so rather than have office hours, I'm really, really flexible. If you need to see me, then come on in, call, call the office, and, and we'll get in there to see you. And one last question. What are you proud about in your district right now? You know, <clears throat> that's a good question. I like the diversity of my district. I have I have Asians. I have um, I have. Um, Caucasians, Europeans, I have um, I have Eastern European, Western European, I have all kinds of na Arabs, I have all kinds of nationalities in my district and that's the beauty of my, my district and I love the people that I, that I work with. So we're about to go off. Thank you for tuning in okay. to CAN TV Political oh. Forum. See you next time. Bye. Boy, the time went by fast. <laughs>